Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2. In this episode, we're going to be taking on Azalea Cities, Gym Leader Bugsy, and his uh, bug catcher friends, I suppose. We got a bug catcher Chaz and such. Off screen, I registered my team. This is the one for uh, Faulkner and this is the one for Bugsy. You can see there's a couple fire types in there, yeah. <laughs> you kind of want some fire types coming in here. This will be a pretty easy battle and yes, Bugsy is a... Is a boy. It's not a girl. As a kid, I thought I was a girl forever because of the Pokemon Stadium 2. Little artwork. And alright, let's check out this uh, dude's team. He's got a Shuckle. Which would be kind of annoying for our fire types. All around, I think Quagsire, Entei, and probably Macargo will be good here. Don't want to use Moltres yet. I kind of want to have him just in the back. And wow, this stadium looks stinking sick. It still has that little... Pokeball mausoleum thing in the back, but look, there's even a spider web. How cool is that? Anyways, Entei, the legendary cat, dog, beast, lion, whatever you want to call him, is extremely helpful in this gym battle since being a pseudo legendary, he packs a powerful punch. And okay, a Rattata. Hmm. Hmm. There's a certain size difference going on here, and despite uh, it being a normal type, Rock Smash is not the better move to do here. <laughs> And Rattata, you probably shouldn't even done a quick attack. I'm pretty darn sure you're definitely faster than me, but hey, whatever. It's his way. He likes to pokey battle. I like to pokey battle a different way by using super... Actually, that's not super effective, but stab attacks from legendary Pokemon. It's fine. The Fire Blast connected. Woo! And we're doing good so far. Um, there's not really too much to talk about. I mean, this is a pretty standard just gym battle. The gym battles are in high contrast to the stadium battles. Some of the stadium battles are extremely difficult, <laughs> including one which we'll probably do towards the end of this episode, but yeah, we'll just... I think this will be neutral damage, but it's still gonna be, like, it, it might be, it might not be super effective, but it's still a special move, and Chuckle doesn't really have the best special defense. Actually, it kind of does. We'll see. Yeah, that did absolutely nothing. Oh boy. I'm actually after going to Quags. No, no, the rollout. Oh gosh. Yeah, rollout is, uh, looks a little silly. It's gonna be super effective, but since it's a shuckle, it's gonna be like no damage. Alright. Let's go into, huh, Quags are, I think, be the best bet here. But yes, um, what was I about to say? Yeah, the state. Okay, basically, when I come to the gym leader castle, I can just chill out, right? I can just be, you know, not have to think about things too heavily. Because these are relatively easy battles, and if I mess up, no big deal. I'm gonna go back. Stadium, however, I have to keep in consideration my, uh, a lot of factors. I have to consider if I can get a, uh, what's it called? A perfect or not. I gotta think about all of those aspects. And, uh, yeah, that's what I kind of like doing the stadium. I could have done an LP where I only did the Gym Leader Castle. Uh, I don't like that. I think that's kind of boring. You're only showing off, like, like... 33% of the game and overall gameplay, and that's just not cool to me, you know? So I decided we're just gonna do the entire game. Not so the mini games towards the end. I know people are like, oh, show the mini games off. Believe me, dude, I will. I love the mini games. That's half the reason why you bought Pokemon Stadium back in the day. Because the mini games are awesome. Also, because this really amazing uh, 3 battle environment, which nowadays, you know, now that we have Pokemon X and Y, we're in the sixth generation of Pokemon. Isn't necessarily the most awe-inspiring thing, but back, I don't know, I'm just trying to take you back to simpler times, I guess. In 2000, this was kind of a big deal. Let's actually show off Macargo, since I don't really think this Paris has anything too threatening. Macargo is a bit of a slow Pokemon. I think he, he could be better. No one's not, no one can deny that. Wait, does he get Shell Break? If he got Shell Break, he might actually be kind of good. I mean, he has a Shell. Makes sense, I don't know. Then again, I don't think you could inherit it from breeding. You probably have to be a move tutor type of thing. But yeah, I really like Macargo. He has a cool design. He's just so horrible. He has horrible typing. He's four times weak to Surf, which a large majority of Pokemon can learn Surf. So that's kind of bad. Or just water type moves in general. So yeah, Macargo, not really the best Pokemon, but hey, looks cool. He's just like dripple. He's like a dripping slug. Look at him. He's just like. Did I win? He doesn't even know. He's so blissfully unaware of the environment that he is inside. And okay, Chaz actually did kind of good damage to Entei, but so far all three of our Pokemon survived. So now we have to battle twins. 
which is kind of cool. They, uh, if you remember back in the actual game, Pokemon Gold and Silver, you battled twins inside of Bugsy's, like, little arena. And, oh, goodness, look at all these, uh, normal-type Pokemon. Uh-huh. All right, we're gonna bring, we're gonna bust out Moltres, Hitmonlee, and Quagsire. Quagsire's just there to take care of that very obnoxious Pikachu, which we don't want to deal with necessarily. If we have something that could wall it, well, that'd just be all the better. So, Moltres, all in all, pretty strong Pokemon. Pretty much everything on this team has Fire Blast. In some scenarios, I prefer Fire Blast to Flamethrower. This is one of the scenarios where it's just like, okay, I need to just do damage. want to try and get one-hit kills and just speed the game up. If you want for consistency, yeah, Flamethrower is just the better thing. And okay, we got Charmed, but that really doesn't bother me that much. I don't really use my attack stat, Clefairy, but okay. And yeah, I, I really like that. Um, I like Fire Blast. When it hits, it's nice. Doesn't always hit, though. So it's kind of a problem in that respect. But okay, we took down the Clefairy. To no one's surprise, actually, uh, we all kind of knew that was going to happen. We all saw that coming. Doesn't really startle anybody, does it? No. It doesn't. Anyways. <laughs> It's gonna set up a Ladyba or Ladyba, Lady? No, that's the evolved form. Ladyba, I've fought you for three episodes straight now. I think. Kind of getting tired of seeing your face. I'm gonna obliterate. Next turn, I will obliterate you with a fire blast. Although I got confused. You know, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna put a lot. I'm gonna put a lot behind this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call it right now. I'm not gonna have myself in confusion. And also, this Fire Blast is gonna... Never mind. I suppose nothing I forecast will ever occur. And okay, a Ladybug with Double Edge. Okay, then. That's cool. Uh... I don't know what to say about that. It just did, like, no damage. In fact, I think I did more damage hitting myself in confusion. Okay, we use Fire Blast. Awesome, this 100% KO it. Yeah, it's a little bit stronger than Fire Punch. Fire Punch. Like 70 power. Fire Blast, on the other hand, is like 120. I think. Pretty sure. Yeah. So naturally, it's gonna win hit kill. Let's see what her final Pokemon, or both of their final Pokemons are. It's a Sun. Skit. Sunkern? Yeah, Sunkern. Sir Skit is a Pokemon that I'm thinking of. That's, that's not in this generation. So here's the thing about doing Pokemon LPs. You just. You get really mixed up. To be fair, there's a lot of Pokemon. There's a couple. There's more than three. That's a lot to keep track of, and sometimes you will mess up the pronunciations of such. Anywho, we've beaten the first two members of Azalea Town's gym, despite them not any, any of them having slowpokes. That annoys me. Azalea Town's famous for the slowpokes. Nobody has a custom slowpokes. We took even less damage from that uh, battle than the first one, so yeah, Min and Lin. Not really doing so hot. Now it's time to take on Bugsy and his really weird hair. It's like purplish blue, bluish purple. Who knows? And there's also a hint of white to it. And ready, I'll show you just how tough a Pokemon can be. Nah. Okay. This guy's actually a big fat liar because he has two Pokemon on his team that are not even partially bug types the Weeping Bill and the Pupitar. What a turd! Anyways, we're going to be taking, uh, Entei, Quagsire, and I want to use Magmar, but eh, he'll have his time. And probably Hitmonlee, just to take care of that Pupitar if we run into it as well, I guess. Quagsire can pretty much take that guy down too, but eh, whatever. Uh, admittedly, Pupitar kind of looks like a bug Pokemon, so... Bugsy's not totally wrong in that respect, it kind of is a bug, a little bit at least, I don't know. And great, sent out the pincer. Or he sent out the pincer. He's not an it. <laughs> it's kind of funny though, anyways. The pincer is gonna do a seismic dose, which is gonna do exactly 50 damage. Nothing too amazing. It's gonna take uh, approximately three more of those seismic tosses to defeat my Ente Bugsy. Probably not the best opening move. Although, missing my fire blast is also rather unfortunate, but I have faith in Ente. There's only been one time in an entire po all the years I've been playing Pokemon that a uh, a Fire Blast has missed all five times, and I ran out of PV for it, and that was a that was a very embarrassing moment. 
I basically just reset the recording. That was back in Pokemon Stadium 1. I was just like, I'm not having this. <laughs> Anyways, uh, nail. See, even looks like a chick in that picture. What are the artists thinking? I don't think Ken. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, next Pokemon is going to be Bugsy's coveted Scyther. Who still is not very threatening. It's going to try Hyper Beam, though. That might actually kill us. We are at 80 health. Yeah, that was a kill. Dang. Did not expect that. Although, the Scyther will have to recharge, I believe. I think if you get a kill with Hyper Beam this generation, you don't have to charge. I think that was just like first generation. Don't really remember. But that's okay. Quagsire will be more than enough to take down this Bug-type Pokemon. Uh, Hitmonlee, not really the best shot. I don't think Scyther can learn any grass attacks, so we should be good. We don't want to dig versus him, though. We want to use our Surf attack, because that's... Okay, has to recharge, so... That did not carry over from Pokemon Red and Blue. So, luckily, we'll just take this guy out with some Surf attacks. I really like Quagsire. Quagsire might be one of my favorite, uh, second... That did no damage. We might have a problem, guys. We might have a problem. Ew. Was not expecting uh, Entei really to bite the dust there. I thought he could actually tank that Hyper Beam, but unfortunately he did not. And that did uh, that did 50 damage. Pretty respectable. Seems like Bugsy's whole team is just doing 50 damage. I might have done even less than 50 though. I don't know if we can win this. That would be rather unfortunate. I'd have to redo the recording. But I'm gonna try and do my best and prevent that. Luckily, Quagsire's innate defenses are kind of pulling through for us right now. Eh, can this Surf actually kill, though? That's the question. Ooh, got a crit. Thank you, Quagsire. You rock, man. And okay, the Scyther is going to bite the dust. Now, what is Bugsy's final Pokemon? What? This can't be happening. What are you talking about? Tons of people beat Azalea Town's gym. It's not like it's not like I'm some legendary trainer that has defeated Bugsy. Okay, the final Pokemon is going to be the Weeping Bell. Not the best matchup for Quagsire. It's a grass type. But what do we do here? Do we go for the dig, or do we do the slam attack? I think we're going to do slam attack. Uh, this reminds me of this one time. Okay, we, we didn't even have speed, so it doesn't matter. This reminds me of this one time. My Pokemon battled a guy in middle school, right? And we uh, you know, we were using our Pokemon. He used an action replay code to make every attack super effective. Why would you do that? Why? It, it was just brings me back, because, like... Remember, my Torterra was a tiny bit slower than his, and his used Earthquake on my Torterra, and it was super effective. And I'm like, in what universe is that super effective against a Torterra? And he's just like, oh, no, man. Turns out he was cheating. Anyways, our final Pokemon is going to be the Hitmonlee. Did not think this battle would turn out like this. Probably should have brought more, uh, um, what's it called? Fire types, but hey, it's all right. We're going to try and use a Mega Kick here. Mega Kick from a Hitmonlee. <laughs> Gonna do pretty res Whoa! Hitmonlee is strong, dude! Gonna do pretty respectable damage. We do not want to use fighting attacks versus this poison type, because that would be super bad. And, oh my goodness, that did like a billion damage. If this next Mega Kick does not connect, we will lose this battle, which would totally suck. Okay, good. Thank goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that was kind of close. Uh, that was a gigantic error on my part. I should not have brought Quagsire. Hitmonlee could have easily... Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know. Hitmonlee probably would have been better to bring. So, yeah, we almost lost that. But we did it! We beat Bugsy. Hip, hip, hooray. We have defeated the Azalea Town Gym. And now we can progress even farther into Gym Leader Castle. But we're going to do that in the next episode, because I kind of like to do that whole thing. And, oh boy, my personal favorite Gym Leader ever, Whitney. Which we'll tackle in the... Next episode, I guess, because we're going back to Pokemon Stadium. So, we've done the Poke Cup. We've done the Challenge Cup. What is next? Certainly not... Cer certainly? Certainly not the Little Cup. We're actually going to Prime Cup this time, guys, and trying to clear out this a little bit. I've registered a team off screen. This is pretty much the most broken team you can bring into this. It has the Wobbuffet. I don't want to use the Wobbuffet, but I will if I absolutely have to. Mm. Anyways, so this team is all around kind of balanced it's not perfect and oh look at that lass she's just having a ball look at her <laughs> absolutely will not lose to you that's what we'll see terry from the anime i suppose no not really this chick has a couple a couple normal times 
but primate, but well, I'm some normal types because primates cross chops, stinking hurt. Next, we're gonna bring in Dodrio. Dodrio is just all around. He's like your jack of all trades. He's really stinking fast. He has really strong stab attacks. And last, Jinx to take care of that. Uh, I don't know. That Blossom can be kind of annoying. And this is Prime Cups Stadium. It has been updated slightly. It's relatively similar to what it looked like before, but it still looks pretty stinking snazzy. If you don't mind me saying, Prime Cup. It is hard. It is hard. There's no way of getting around it. That is why I have brought the, um, the Wobbuffet for that sole reason. We're actually right here. We're going to switch into Dudge Rio. This is not a opportune matchup for Prime Ape, so yes. Prime Cup is just so stinking hard, guys. I'm going to have to actually use my in-game level 100 team from Pokemon Blue version. Yes, there's two teams, not just gold. There's, in fact, silver, too. We'll, we'll get into what that does. And Endure is going to be 100% useless there, madam. That's going to do nothing. So what we're going to do here is we can either... We can see if it's going to switch and do the Pursuit. I don't even think that would do that much damage. Let's just go for the Fly. I think the Fly is probably the best bet. Okay, it didn't switch out. Nice. So we're going to go in and use the Fly attack. <laughs> you know Drio's just going to hang out? It's going to hang out. That's cool. No, it's Charging Sunlight. Oh. Well played, last Terry. Well played. Oh, goodness. This is going to have to one-hit kill or something. Or we're going to take a Solar Beam from a Blossom to the face. Let's see how much damage that can do. Ooh, just shy of one hit KO. Hopefully we can tank this solar beam. Um, it's not gonna be super effective or anything. So, oh, well actually, dang, does Rio actually tank that rather well? So I'm not gonna risk taking another solar beam. We're just gonna go for the try attack. It is also a stab attack. So let's just see how much damage that can do. Um, sweet, okay, we beat the Blossom. And we only lost, uh, we lost a decent amount of HP, but I still think we can pull out a perfect here. I also gave items to each of my Pokemon. Kind of important. You definitely want to have items. My uh, gold and silver teams will have much better items, by the way. They just have, like, uh, for instance, Jinx just has a berry. It's nothing spectacular. The game will give you six held items, most of which are all berries. Yeah, they're all berries for some reason. I don't know why that is. There are leftovers and stuff, but, you know, you kind of want to have this taken. You know, leftovers, the magnets, your charcoals, yada, 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 twisted spoon. Please! Do not put me asleep. No. Thank you. Thank you. So all we gotta do, all we gotta do now is let this cross chop connect, and we should be sitting pretty. Uh, I use that term way too often. Or actually, that saying it's not really a term. And, uh, primate the beast. Get a super effective critical hit cross chop. That's what I'm talking about. And, <laughs> my darling. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling pretty bad. I'm sorry, Terry. How can I make it up to you? Anyways. Her last Pokemon will most likely be another normal type. Oh, goodness. It is a... Togetic. So, our, our Cross Chop won't be super effective here. So, that is why we're actually going to go into Jinx. Jinx's Ice Punches hurt. Jinx has insanely strong special attack. And her speed is not that bad either. Jinx all around uh, in Prime Cup. You may be seeing a lot of her just because of her versatility. It's very despite her looking absolutely disgusting. Dang, look at that HP, dude. That's not bad HP either. Goodness. On top of that, she's also a uh, a girl, which will be very helpful if you run into with some charm spammer. It's never fun. Mm. She slapped her so hard her hair turned around. Goodness. Jinx, calm down. <laughs> this swift attack is going to do next to nothing to Jinx. She don't even care. She, 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 she pretended like it hurt. It was a fate. Or a, a faint? A faint? Yeah, that's what they call it. It didn't do jack crap. And this second ice punch most likely going to connect and get that to take out of there. So as you can see, uh, my team's pretty stinking good. Not going to lie. It's pretty satisfactory. And the Jinxes were pretty much going to be spamming through this. Also, Wobbuffet sometimes. Wobbuffet, um... I want to know your guys' opinion. Is he really that overpowered to use in Pokemon Stadium? Because my strategy, a lot of my late game strategies revolve around just using Wobbuffet to just take down uh, two other Pokemon, which I perfectly understand. If like, no, that's boring. Stop using Wobbuffet. Gosh dang it. But gosh, dude, he's like the best Pokemon in the whole game, especially in this where the CPUs are semi predictable. But yeah, let me know about that. I want some feedback on that. Uh, I asked a couple of my friends. They're like, no, I don't see a problem with that. It seems pretty... You know, standard. And this guy even uses a lot of that. Looking forward to that. But we got a Slowking that has Psychic. That's basically going to take down half of his team. 
Uh, Zapdos... It doesn't have anything super effective against his team. Although... Um... They can't really do that much damage to us, because Zapdos is part electric. And, uh... Hmm... What is my be What is the best way to take down that that Wobbuffet? I guess with my own Wobbuffet. I mean, I don't know. That, that makes sense to me. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna try my best to predict what the guy is gonna do. If we encounter Wobbuffet first. That could actually be pretty bad. Any Wobbuffet from any like character in this game is downright terrifying. And okay, he used a Nido King. I'm pretty cool with that. Now he even abbreviates them. It's a king versus a king. So certainly. A battle of royalty. He's gonna swap out. I wonder. He's going into. The, he's going. Yeah, he's going into the Wobbuffet. Crud. That means he brought it. Uh, no, no. <laughs> you were seeing that correct. Wobbuffet has 525 HP. Yeah, buddy. Ooh, that was a crit though. The problem with Wobbuffet is it will use Mirror Coat, and that is a ton of damage. What we can do here is. We might actually be able to disable his mirror coat, which would be fan fantastic. So let's try that. That may not work. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till he uses the move. Okay, use safeguard. I'm fine with that. Uh, I don't really have any abilities that do that, anyways. Let's actually just bait out the mirror coat. Go for a growl. Then we can maybe swap into a uh, maybe Zapdos. Okay, so his defense is gonna be lowered. That's actually no, that's his attack, right? Oh yeah, Leer is the one. Okay, so he, he used the Mirror Coat. So now we're going to do Disable. And that should basically just force him. He can't use that attack anymore. Which is what we want to do. So Slow King, very, actually very good for taking down Lava Fets. Yes, we disabled the Mirror Coat. Awesome. Oh, we use Destiny Bond. So here's the issue with Destiny Bond in Pokemon Stadium, guys. If you die and get that move off, your Pokemon dies. Which, granted, is a fantastic strategy for me. That did absolutely nothing. But if Slowking dies... Okay. That disable lasted one turn. Are you kidding me? Okay, this is, this is going to take way too long. We're going to Zapdos. Uh, we're just going to slam it with a Thunder Attack. If we don't get the perfect just because of the Wobbuffet, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's just like, hey, what am I supposed to do about it, man? It's a Wobbuffet. He's stinking strong. My Wobbuffet, though, has the same exact set. So, if you're lucky, Wobbuffet can take down, like, half of a, a team, which is very, very good. We want to happen if at all possible. Anyways, so here we're, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to thunder this thing. Hopefully it doesn't mirror coat. Hopefully it thinks I'm some kind of crazy hybrid Zapdos that uses strength or something. Heck, we don't have to hope for that because we got a second crit. Yay! That makes me extremely happy. So the Wobbuffet uh, got taken down. And uh, our little, uh, little Kung Fu guy. Yang is not happy about that. He's a little depressed, but that's what you get for running Wobbuffet. Only total dirt bags. Use Wobbuffet. This guy's going to go into his Nido King again. Zapdos can't do jack crap to this guy, so we're going back into Slow King. So now the battle is going to go more like it should have from the beginning. This guy didn't even bring Wobbuffet. We probably would have won almost immediately, but hey, it's whatever. Oh, man. I can't believe that disable only lasted for like one turn. What's up with that, dude? Okay, the detect failed. That's all. That's good and all. Let's go for the psychic attack. I don't think he can switch into anything. Horn drill. Please don't want it kill me. Okay, good. good. That would have been very irritating. Okay, so this psychic um should definitely kill. I don't see it not killing it. How did a Nido King survive a gosh dang psychic from a Slow King? Slow King has insanely strong special attack. They have special defense, but actually, I think his normal defense is better. Regardless, we just spitted him vaguely, and the Nido King goes down. Pretty happy those uh, horn drills weren't connecting. This guy's whole team basically just revolves around trying to make me mad, I guess. <laughs> his last Pokemon is a Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee, I completely wall. We're gonna be okay. This next psychic. Detect. You're really just dragging this out. Granted, Detect looks really stinking cool. So I'll let that pass, I guess. But gosh dang it, man. Quit using Detect and all these really lame attacks. Really zinging annoying. Ugh, that Mega Kick actually did a fair amount, which I'm 
kind of afraid of, but anyways. We're gonna go for the Psychic Attack. Hopefully, hopefully that'll win a KO. Nothing is going right today. Fanta well, to be fair, I did get two crits on a Wobba Fed, so whatever. The second Mega Kick is gonna connect. However, I'm gonna get my Psychic off, so that means a second continue for me. Huzzah! Huzzah, all right. <laughs> and okay, we've beaten the second trainer of the Prime Cup. It's Pokeball. Which is definitely very good and slow king. Look at that level of derp. That is a derpy stinking Pokemon. <laughs> and all right, Yang, you put up a good fight, buddy, but it wasn't enough. And I had my own wobble fight in the back, so... There's no way you're going to defeat me. But guys, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2. Join us next time where we continue on with the Prime Cup and go towards the Plain Badge. And onward till we get the Rising Badge. So see you guys then. Bye.